Yo, what's up everybody? It's Gerard, uh, aka Gerard. That's my name. That's what they call me. Well, they call me JD too, so <laughs> I guess aka JD. Normally I do blog posts, just type up what I'm feeling, but honestly, as of late, I just haven't been able to type. Uh, I felt like it's easier for delivering my messages um, through video, video content. So I think I'm going to start trying to send out videos. So bear with me right now. This is actually my first video. I'm in my bedroom. I have no tripod. I have a tripod. It's actually on the floor. But this camera is on my windowsill. I'm looking at y'all. I was doing some work out there. Said, Louis, I'm tired of typing this. I'm not getting anywhere with this. I'm just throw the camera on and do what I do. For those who don't know me, I'm a photographer, a full time freelance photographer. A lot of y'all may have heard my story. Um, if not, I'll just do a quick recap. Basically, I'm from Florida. I graduated my degree in marketing in 2013. And then in 2015, uh, I left Florida. I got tired of living in Florida, so I left Florida and I moved to New York City uh, with a backpack, $150. And that was it. Uh, I didn't have a job. I didn't have a place to stay. Uh, I kind of just came up here and just said, I'm gonna make it work. And I did make it work. Uh, eventually, I did get a job part-time doing social media marketing for this company in Queens. Um, and while I was doing that, I was looking for a means of income and just figuring out what I could do to make some money on the side because obviously, New York is super expensive. So in 2016, I ended up picking up the camera for the first time, saying, hey, let me see what I can do with this. I've always had it and it was just always in my back closet and I just never used it so I was like let me actually take it out the box and actually figure out how to work this thing and from there that's kind of where my passion for photography developed um, at first I was just focusing on learning how to work the camera how to get the lightings and settings and shoot anything on manual and everything so uh, the first few months was just me just trial and error just shooting buildings and trees and just figuring out the lighting and what I liked and what I didn't like how I was editing my photos until eventually I started doing portraits of people people started hitting me up and asking me uh, could I take photos of them and I said sure I think um, my first time realizing I fell in love with photography is when I had my first I've had several now, but my first 14 hour day where I was shooting people all day for 14 hours straight. And normally, a normal person would come home and go straight to sleep or get some food or watch TV, just relax. But me, I went straight to my computer and was like, oh, let me edit these photos. And I got to edit and I was editing for another three or four hours. And then I went to bed that night and I was just like, wow, I've really been doing this for 18 hours. And it didn't even feel like 18 hours. It felt like it was like a couple hours, three or four hours, but I've been doing it for 18 hours and I enjoyed every second of it. And I think that was my first time realizing like, hey, I think this is what is a passion is. I think like I'm actually passionate about this. So I had been shooting for um, a few months now. And finally in 2017, I just finally just grew the courage and was like, you know what? I really enjoy doing this photography thing. So since I've quit my job, um, it's been, like I said, five months now. A lot of people have been hitting me up, just asking me, hey, like, what's it like being a full-time photographer? I know you, is, is it crazy? Like, are you surviving? Are you homeless yet? And and are you able to pay your bills? And like, how, how's that going for you? And so I just wanted to do a quick little video recap just to explain like how it's been for me, I guess, and just my journey so far. And it's only, it's only really been a short journey. I was just down the block a few, a few months ago. So it's a short journey, I haven't done much, but um, just to answer the questions with the knowledge I do have so far, I just want to, you know, share it and, and who knows, it might help somebody who, who's thinking about making that jump too. And I just want to share what I, I've learned so far. Um, the first thing I want to say is, let's just get it out the way now. This is hard. This is not something for the faint hearted. It's way, way, way more than just the photography thing. It's more than just knowing how to work your camera and knowing the lightings and because there's a million people knowing how to do that. It's it's the marketing, it's the finance, it's the customer acquisition, it's the constantly just wearing all hats. It went from me wearing one hat at my old job where everything was just given to me. I had assignments and they just dished it out to me, to me literally wearing all the hats at once, me being in charge of my own. My own it's my company. And it's super, super, I can't stress this enough, it's super important that you're prepared to wear all those hats that come with the job um, if not you you have to have somebody in order for the company to even work all those hats have to be filled there's no way possible you can work a company without having a marketing plan there's no way possible you can work a company without having a finance plan there's no way uh, possible you can have a company if you're not acquiring new customers um, if you don't have a game plan on how you're gonna do that stuff then it's gonna be impossible to do um, so I think that was really one of my first and hardest lessons because um, I kind of just jumped out the gate on how I did it. And so one of the biggest things that I've learned is 
uh, have a game plan and what was the first thing that really switched up um, when I started seeing results is I sat down and I made an ideal client in my head as far as who's paying me like how am I gonna make my money how am I gonna be able to pay my bills who's gonna be who's gonna be feeding me essentially that's, that's basically what it is you know and so um, I sat down you can't shoot for everybody there's a, there's a certain shot for everybody everybody you're not there's no there's no product in the world that's for everybody there's no cell phone that's for everybody there's no there's no camera that's for everybody there's no there's people there's different bottles of water there's just there's no water that's for everybody essentially so one thing that i came to the quick realization of when i got into this photography business is that my personal shoots what i enjoy shooting and what's my preference on shooting is much different than my paid shoots and what i mean by that is the things that you love shooting might not necessarily be the things that's paying your bills um i enjoy doing fashion and portraits but sometimes people hit me up uh, asking for events and other stuff and that if you're going to survive you have to know who's paying your bills and until you get to the point where you kind of switch it off where it goes from less personal to more paid gigs until you finally your paid gigs are becoming your personal gigs and it's all fusing into one until you get to that point you kind of just have to pay your dues and, and take what you get and so with that being said, it's important that you know who's actually booking you and who's actually paying you. I know, for example, my clients that book me are usually some type of digital curators. They have some type of website, uh, social media. Um, they need these images for their brand. And so they're putting these images on their, their Instagram and their Twitter and their Facebook. So I know when I'm shooting these photos, um, I'm throwing things at them. Like I make sure the images are optimized for Instagram. I know that you're going to be shooting, posting most of these images on Instagram. So they're already cropped to fit perfectly on Instagram feed, whether it be landscape or portrait. Uh, another thing is I know that most of these images, if you're doing digital curating, you're going to probably put them on your Instagram story. So I'm shooting images that fit perfectly on your Instagram story. I'm talking to them I know that they already have a lot of work to do and so I add value to myself by letting them know what I bring to the table for example I make mood boards for my, each of my photo shoots when you book me I make a custom mood board for you with sample images of what we're going to shoot we have looks together we have locations together we just have poses and concepts that way when we get to the photo shoot it's less work for you you already know what you're going in you know what you get this is the type of things that they hear in the back of their head like okay he has a mood board for me already so I don't even have to plan these photo shoots I know when I get these photo shoot these photos back they're gonna be perfectly fit for my Instagram, so I can just download these things and go. So literally, all I did was come to shoot, throw in the outfit, and he shot his camera, and a few weeks later, I got professional photos that I can use on all my social media platforms. Don't have to crop anything, don't have to change any colors, don't have to add any watermarks or anything. Like, he's done all that for me, so it just makes it, it adds value to what I do and makes it just more, makes more sense on why you should book me opposed to another photographer or any photographer in general. So these are the type of things that um, I'm addressing with my potential clients because when they hear these type of things, they're thinking, wow, this is less work for me. He knows exactly what I need. He's delivering exactly what I need. I literally just have to book him and everything else is taken care of. These are the things that, that puts you, it might not seem a lot to you because it's really not, as a photographer, it's not, it's not hard to crop an image, but for them, it just makes their life so much easier and just really, it strikes that selling point to them, you know? So yeah. That's why I think it's important knowing who your ideal client is um, beforehand, uh, knowing the, the questions and concerns that's stopping them from booking you, because um, it's a saturated market. There's a lot of people with a camera. Hopefully this information is able to help you rethink your process on how you're, you're talking to your clients or potential clients and just how you can market yourself and things. Just, just make you think a little bit more. Um, again, my name is Gerard Anderson. You can check me out at createdbygerard.com. Well, you can follow me on all my social media handles, which is created by Gerard. So I have an Instagram created by Gerard, Twitter, uh, Facebook, all of those created by Gerard, J-A-R-R-O-D. Um, it's been real. I appreciate you watching. And until next time, y'all take care. Peace. <laughs>